Okay, welcome back to Shots in the walk My name is Renee. And my name is Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi, Renee. Um, we are here today um, with our dear friend, Erica Kennedy. Hey, welcome Erica. to the podcast, Erica. Hi, ladies. Hey. hey. We're so happy you're here. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. We know you're very, very, very busy. Thank you for inviting me. I feel honored <laughs> to be here. Yeah, you like literally just walked in the door from work, huh? Oh, yeah. Like, didn't even get a reapply makeup or anything. Like, I'm, this is me in the fresh. Well, yeah. you look gorgeous. You look gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> um, okay. So, usually when I get off work and I just, um, you know, I'm fresh in the door, I might need to take a shot. What about you? I, I think yeah. that sounds about right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, I am drinking uh, the same shit that I've been drinking for the last, like, four episodes. Four delays of Blanco tequila. Okay, I've got Evan Williams because they are our sponsor. An official sponsor. <laughs> I am <laughs> drinking some Papa Bueno Reposado here Delicious. today. Okay. Oh, a local awesome. company. Local company. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, cheers, ladies. Yes. Cheers. God damn, that's good. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, Erica, we mm-hmm. usually like to start these things off with um, we want to get, well, n- number one, we all know each other because we worked together, uh, for the same company. We never worked in the same store, but we did a pizza place in Seattle, a little pizzeria, a little fancy pizza. pizza um, yeah. and so we've known each other for, I don't know, some years, some change. Several. Yeah. yeah. Some... A long time. Um, and so, but I actually don't know where was your, what was your first job in the industry? Well, okay. So my very, very first job was, uh, when I was 16 and like, I wanted my own money. I wanted to be able to kind of do my own thing. Um, I was in high school. Um, I decided not to play volleyball my senior year, not to play any sports. Yeah, exactly. And (laughs) I was like, I'm gonna go get myself a job. And um, I started working ironically at a um, Italian place called the Spaghetti Works. Um, So I guess it (laughs) it started me (laughs) off early. Um, It was in Longview, Washington. And um, that's right. You're from Longview. Yeah. So south, south of uh, Seattle, about three hours, uh, right on the I-5. Um, the business is no longer around because I looked it up because we used to have this really yummy broccoli cheddar mushroom soup. And I remember oh, being like, I yum. just want this recipe. I want to make it. That and sounds very find- Italian. Oh, <laughs> I know. Like so, like, so white people, like 100%, like, no, it wasn't at all. But um, they had really good food, really good sandwiches and stuff. And um, that was my first my first restaurant job. Yeah, I, I didn't know, have a clue, had no idea what I was doing. Uh, didn't know how to use a POS, but back then it was just like literally a cash register with like yeah. tapes that you would, you know, like how totally. So yeah, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a, it was a ton of fun. Giving yeah, your, were you giving your friends food on the side? Um, it was more of like I guess it wasn't full service, so it, it was, was like more of person. like counter service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were making sandwiches, you were heating up spaghetti, you were Got doing it. all the different stuff. But um, yeah, it was it was really fun to give you kind of like at a young age, teach you how to get confident, teach you how to your time management. If you have to get ranch dressing made and you've got to go over here and do this. And so that um, is like such a perfect first job for you because I I feel like that actually shows that gave you such a good foundation because you're so good at like multitasking and and doing a hundred jobs at once and being able to juggle all these different aspects of restaurants. So that actually checks out for me. I, I, yeah, it's I can funny. See that. Yeah. It's, I, I would have never even thought about it until you guys asked me that question. Cause I, yeah. <laughs> it all kind of comes, comes full circle, doesn't it? Yeah, totally. Okay. So you did the, the long view, what's it called? Spaghetti works. It was called spaghetti works. Yeah, That's adorable. No around. It was yeah. like, the, it was everyone's favorite. Like I remember like everyone wanting to go down there after volleyball games and, and all that stuff, but um, I was working and they were all finished with their volleyball. So yeah, yeah <laughs> you're like, I'm making money. Yeah. I was like, whatever. <laughs> see you on Friday. I didn't have yeah. an outfit on. <laughs> I played volleyball in high school, like, uh, like middle school, high school, like a big club, everything. I loved it. And then also around that age, I quit volleyball, but it wasn't to get a job. It was to smoke more pot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> a different kind of currency. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. One that came full circle as well. Didn't you, Anna, I remember, didn't you get kicked off your cheer squad? I did get kicked off cheer squad because there was a rumor that I smoked pot at a party. I will was not confirm true? or deny. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing I was a total good kid I was a really good kid it was until I got out of college that I was kind of cut loose and had yeah more fun. yeah <laughs> that's so funny well you Love made that. the right choice because it sounds yeah. like you were chowing on some delicious spaghetti while I was just <laughs> wa- wanting to chow you down wanted on some the delicious spaghetti, spaghetti yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing yeah yeah so where did you where did you go from there how'd you end up where what's take us on a journey yeah, did you um, always work in the industry or did you like kind of veer off from there? Well, I, um, so, okay, so after I graduated high school, uh, I went to our community college that was um, literally shared like the same parking lot. And um, I started playing volleyball there. I walked on there and then I was playing for the community college for two years and then went off to WSU. And during that time, I actually, um, once I did spaghetti works, I worked at a, a really, fun, it was like the dream job. It was, um, it was called the pro shop and it was uh a place in um oh i have visitors we might want to cut that i can read oh it's all good yeah don't worry about trying it. to come out of the room and i forgot that i'm parked right here if you can um, take and take a second if anyone needs to move or something it's give no me one deal. second yeah, yeah, no, you're let fine. Me see if he's dressed you're fine yeah <laughs> don't worry about it I- i'm right here I move. I'll move the case. Wasn't dressed, so I'm really happy that we. Did, I'm really happy that we did that. I'm gonna just rotate, rotate this guy over here. Listen, there we go. We're trying to get a little sneak peek for the YouTube I, channel. Yeah, you know, I think it would be great. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I have nothing to. Hide, I want to see but, Kieran's uh, butt. Yeah. <laughs> a little booty patootie. <laughs> All right, you're you're clear, Kennedy. You're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to work tonight so um oh okay uh so so back to our question um <laughs> yeah where did it take me so okay um go ahead no but you got it those oh. volleyball can you call it wsu go uh, ahead yeah so um so i went played uh volleyball at uh at lcc and then um transferred over to washington state and um i didn't have a job in at washington state because i was focused on school um, I was doing the fine arts program, so there's no time with that. Your classes are like three, four, five hours long. Oh, dang. Um, yeah, they were crazy. So, like, you had really no room for anything because um, you're you're doing a full still life class where some person standing in the room and you got to draw Whoa. them or you're doing, you know, pottery. Like and... naked people? Oh, yeah, lots of naked Did people. Did you see lots, lots of, of penises? Yeah, and some of the bad ones were the really old men that were coming in, and it was like they paid the homeless person off the side of the street. I honestly. have a question about this. Okay. Yeah. In this scenario, how often do you feel like the people that signed up to be uh, these peoples, what are we calling them? Models? Models. Model. They're a model. Okay. Yes, yeah. they are models. Are, do you, how often do you think those people are, are like exhibitionists? I think that's probably 100% of the time. Right? Yeah. It's, it was, some of them were really weird when they would make full eye contact with you and you're like, Ugh. like, and then other times people would be very professional and they wouldn't look at you at all. I mean, you're sitting on these things I call horses that were down low and it was kind of like you were straddling this little bench and then it had like a, a thing in the front so that your board could go right on top of it and you could be drawing and looking up and drawing. And um, yeah. There, it, it was it was always a giggle. Everyone always giggled, and then you kind of just got into it. But um, it's got to be so uncomfortable. I feel like that is a was. scenario where, like, okay, there's probably not a walk-in in an art studio, but like maybe <laughs> you should take a shot. <laughs> like, I mean, it was absolutely. Like, oh God, yeah, there was there was some times where you were like, why are we doing? Like, how did I, how is this a course? Like, how are we just <laughs> looking at people? bodies and drawing, yeah but you're like did fun. i sign up for drawing wieners 101 or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all girls it was all girls for sure but uh yeah there were a lot of flop, floppy boobies as well and yeah. lots of uh lots of fun stuff but um yeah it was a <laughs> I, I was focused on doing my art degree so once i graduated there i moved um moved back home um for a tiny little stint my parents told me uh you can't move to seattle until you have a job so i yeah. got on craigslist smart parents yeah they were like, we're not moving you up to Seattle. I was like, just come on. I've got friends. I've already found a place to live. 
Um, and they said, until you have a job, you're not going up there. So I literally got on Craigslist and found the first job, which was Patty Coyne's Irish Pub. I applied oh, nice. for it. And nice. I was like, got a job. Got awesome. a job. <laughs> good. So, so many uh, good fucking people in this industry worked at Patty Coins, had a stint at Patty Coins. This is like fucking great. That's a. <laughs> I don't know if That's it's a awesome. launching pad, but uh, so many people. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, Patty coins was my first, I had, I, I mean, other than spaghetti works, which you don't really put, Oh yeah. Me and me, my 16 year old self, like tons of experience, but, um, yeah, it was like, a I great learning. Did that ranch so good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You asked me about spaghetti f- sauce with Mazithra and I'll, I'll tell you all about it. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I'm hungry. I don't know. Everything's yeah. like- <laughs> <laughs> right. Snack time. Um, yeah, no, so we, uh, yeah, I ended up um, starting off at Patty Coins. I also was a private art instructor at that time. I picked oh, up a cool. Job, which was really cool. Um, I did a lot of travel, which was the hardest part of it. Um, and it was really cool to see the creation aspect um, at a very, very early stage and know that you were being um, an influence of that for um, people, which I wish I would have had uh, a yeah. class like that. So, um, That's so that was cool. cool. Yeah, how did really you cool. who how did you get clients for that? I'm just curious. I worked for a company. Um it was oh, called cool. Art, it was called Art for Kids School and I found that of course on on Craigslist as well because I, I my parents were very upset that they paid for a art degree and I wasn't using it. Um <laughs> fair. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, right. And so then I um I supplemented working that during the day and then I worked at Patty's in the evening. Um and it was, it was really, it was really cool. It was definitely that's re- cool. Yeah. That's the dream right there. Well, so when you were a, you know, little lady in college and you were going for this art degree, what did you imagine you were going to be when you grew up? I mean, I did, really was there like a dream like, there or like what, you know what I mean? I, you always think like, oh, I'm going to be this painter and, and I'm going to, you know, paint stuff, but I never really like. No, I, originally I had thought I was going to go into marketing and advertising, oh, and um, which is ironic. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, my, I had gone down the advertising communication um, realm at WSU, and I really, I mean, that school is known for its communication program. Mm. Um, so super duper competitive. Um, I wasn't in the whole. I didn't really want to do like you know, Com 145, where you're doing copy, I didn't want to do public speaking, standing in front of people, like there were all these other pieces that went along with that degree that I really wasn't into. Um, And I ended up changing to fine art um, halfway through my college career and decided, hey, I'm doing way better at this. I really enjoy it. Um, Might as well just get a degree. And then I was going to get my BFA. And then I just decided to kind of be done with school and and head to Seattle. So um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly. I, I, I can't even identify with what I would have thought I was going to be doing at this point. If you would have told me being in restaurants, I would have been like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, so, right. Same. So random. Yeah. But, but fulfilling and I'm enjoying it. So, yeah. yeah, I know. I think that's kind of a thing for sure. I know that's a weird thing to kind of think about like, oh, what did you want to be when you were a little kid, you know, when you grow up or whatever. And the only, I found this thing recently, it was a little book that, that I created, I must have been, I think it was like in second or third grade. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> okay, what do you want to do this year? What do you want to do this year? And it was like, it went up to when you were 18. <laughs> and so when you were 18, you were supposed to pick like what you wanted to be when you grew up. And mine was, I want to go to Japan. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. You're I like, like, I just... Yeah, I was like, dude, like oh. nothing. It was like kids were like, I want to be a doctor. I yeah, know, right. Whatever. You know, it was like, what do you want to be when you grew up? You, or what, yeah. maybe it wasn't eighteen. Maybe it was after call. I don't. Either way. But yeah. yeah. I just thought it was funny because I was like, oh wow, really shooting for the stars there. Are that's we? hilarious. <laughs> really, guys, want to travel? But I mean, that's that's cool yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, and you do travel, and but you've what ne- we do we do lots yeah. of travel. Yeah, we. Travel. But you've never been to Japan. We've never gone to Japan. We keep meaning to in the winter because Josh wants to snowboard there, but we've just, yeah. yeah, we've never made, we've stopped there in the airport a few times, but. Oh, wow. Awesome. It's, yeah. Japan's awesome, but it's expensive. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's really one of the expensive. Most expensive in the it's world. Like top, like yeah, cities. top five. Yeah, like top next five to cities. Switzerland, next to Zurich. Mm-hmm. Renee, what did you want to be when you were a little kid? Uh, I wanted to be a photographer. Did like, you? Yeah, oh yeah, totally. And I, I actually was like really, um, 
I don't want to say I was really good at photography. <laughs> you were, <laughs> but like, she was the best. I did. I was like, I was decent for a teenager. I was pretty good. I was pretty good. I mean, I had like, um, I had a teacher. I, I, I had a teacher have to create classes for me in high school because I was excelling so fast beyond oh. the other. So I would come in and do zero hour um, classes. She just made up curriculums for me. Which was cool. Wow. I just That's actually, so I, cool. I, I, well, yeah, but not really because I, I, after that, I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna, you You're know, bored. become a big piece of shit and not do that at all. <laughs> Did you start smoking pot? I no. <laughs> I was more of a drinker at a young gotcha. age. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. Yeah. Photography. I just huh. found like uh because I this year's been a quite a transition so I found um some boxes that I haven't looked at in over a decade. Totally. And yeah. it was like full of like all my high school, like portfolios that I created. And I was like, Oh my God, it just was such a crazy, weird, like memory lane. Yeah. I don't know, it's bizarre, but anyway, did it push, did it make you want to go back and start doing it? Totally did. And like, yeah, the flame? Mm-hmm. it did. But the thing is, is that I, I was never, and I still really am not, and not, interested in like digital photography the, the it's changed so much since when we were in high school like sure. the the beauty and the allure of photography to me was always in the dark room so um and that just doesn't exist really anymore so i don't i don't think i would ever pursue it as a career but as a hobby i would love to have like a dark room someday in a in my dream house you just should to for fuck sure. around with it that'd be fun one time in high school i took this class called viscom visual communications and there was a dark room and this cute boy kissed me in the dark room. Ooh. That's like everyone's dream. Yeah. I was probably totally. stoned. <laughs> <laughs> what? I what? love it. You got lost in there. Are those lips on my lips? What? <laughs> I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, man. Well, this is going downhill. Yeah. All right. <laughs> No big deal. Okay, so we were at Patty Coins. You were doing art, uh, and then I mean, you ended up at Trib somehow. How? Where were we at? Yeah. So, um, so there was a girl that was at Trib or that was at Patty's, and then she had gotten I don't want to say poached, but she she started working off at Trib and Ollie, and was like, "Hey, you should come and work here. Uh, I think you'd really like it." Um, and I was like, "Okay." like sounds cool I'll come up and I interviewed with um with Colleen Wilkie I know you know her Renee she was with she's um, my hero and she's amazing she's one of my best friends I um, I was your hero. she's got no I just like you a lot but call okay. I like super love Colleen I she doesn't I don't know her but I just know of her and her reputation and I like just I actually strive to be too. yeah yeah She's Trib family too, for sure. So yeah. she, So um, for everybody listening, Trib is the place that we, it's short for the place that we all used to work at. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, she, she actually uh, interviewed me and hired me. And um, I started off kind of as a host for the first, they didn't have a position really. Um, yeah. Cause it was such a small, small team. Um, and so I kind of hosted the first night and did like a working interview and she said, yeah, why don't you come back? And then I hosted like, I want to say like two or three other weekends. And then I spotted straight into a serving position. Um, and then I was there till 2011. So that was 2008 till 2011. And then, um, I moved to London and, uh, started working over there, general managed, um, a restaurant at, uh, Corny and Barrow, which was the downstairs of London Stock Exchange. Um, in Patton Oster Square and uh, started off there as a um, as just an assistant manager and then uh, worked my way to GM in nine months and which Woo! was a ton of work good for you yeah yeah it was uh, it was a ton of work it was really uh, it was really different to be in an English-speaking country that was so far removed and different from what I was so accustomed to yeah yeah um, I bet you're speaking the same language, but you are not speaking the same language. Yeah. Lots of stuff. So um, just the business, just the way services, just the, um, the, the dine out culture is totally different um, than what it is here. So um, it was just a lot of absorbing. It was a lot of just understanding, learning how to tell your story as quick as you possibly can to just move on to the next thing that you needed to do. Cause everyone's like, right. ah, 
Erica from America. And, uh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> gold real quick. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but uh, yeah, then then came back to um, came back. What? To why did you move to London? Um, Kieran was playing rugby. He um, who's Kieran? To yeah, who's Ooh. Kieran? Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You might know him. You you did go to Italy with them. I know him really well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Kieran's my husband, um, and ironically, he was a boy I met at Patty Coins. Um, and there's been a lot of Patty Coin marriages, uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, so met him at Patty's and then he was my boyfriend at the time. And then we're married now. We're actually celebrating our 14 year anniversary, um, this next week. Dang. Woo! Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, so, uh, yeah, Kieran and I were decided to go to London cause he was, um, pursuing playing rugby professionally semi-professionally um was was gonna be um he had some connections over there and we just got married in 2010 and decided we wanted to like not be on we wanted to go on a neutral soil so he wasn't only in america or i wasn't only going back to new zealand because he's from new zealand yeah um got it yeah and then just kind of rocked over he um fortunately was uh he had ancestry because his grandfather was from newcastle upon thames which is in northern england so um we got we got visas that just said yep you guys can go um over there so we could stay there for up to five years and their plan was actually to stay there for five years and then get our eu passports and then have dual citizenship but Uh, um, yeah couldn't imagine what that would look like with brexit and all that all that business so yeah yeah um, (laughs) i don't know how that would have worked but um yeah so we we left there in 2013 and came back stateside and um for a tiny little second, we thought we were going to go to New Zealand. Um, mm-hmm. But then we realized that I wasn't a resident yet. I couldn't work straight away. Um, and that I would have to apply for all these different things. Um, and so then we just decided to come back to Seattle. And Got it. literally, I think I was home for maybe two days. And I was already picking up shifts and working like I had never left. Um, oh, yeah. really? We man, yeah. Mm-hmm, I was at Brandon's right. apartment. I stayed at Brandon uh, Barnado, um, mm-hmm. who you know as well. Um, I stayed at his apartment because he was in Thailand or something. And then I just started picking up shifts at Triv. And it was like, did I actually move to London and like, <laughs> mm-hmm. live over there? Was I gone for two and a half years? You're like not even yeah. over your jet lag and you're like yeah. working. <laughs> right? Fully, yeah. like fully back on picking up shifts. That's 100%. Yeah. That's, That's so nice. just typical though of like working in the restaurant industry oh, yeah. where mm-hmm. people like you haven't worked somewhere for months and people are like, hey, listen, uh, can you please just cover me? Like I really got this thing. And yeah. you're just like, yeah fuck it whatever yeah (laughs) totally totally and it was a whole new team nobody knew me except for the customers which at first was a little bit I don't want to say not well received but I felt like people were like who's this girl like coming in here and we all work here kind of thing and then um then it just it became seamless and and everyone was great the team was great we had a I mean Queen Anne was always just an amazing amazing little like golden egg always busy so yeah. it, was, um, it was a good that, transition. That place was awesome um, because it was so built on the neighborhood and the regulars coming in. So yeah, it's not surprising to me that you came in and the team was new and all the customers knew you <laughs> and adored you. <laughs> they, it was a ton of fun. It was a really nice, warm welcome home for sure. It was a, it was a easier transition than it probably could have been. It was an easier transition, obviously coming home than it was going to London and being like, Hey I guys, bet. I promise I'm cool. Like people like me where I'm from. Like, yeah. right. I'm a hard worker. Like my I'm mom gonna... thinks I'm special. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a chance. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for sure. Erica from America. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so it was a, it was a good learning opportunity for sure. And I learned a ton about myself. I learned a ton about being resilient. I learned a ton about there's so many different ways to do things that our way is not the only way. Um, yeah. What a but concept, also, folks. Right? Yeah, like, right. It, I mean, yeah, huge concept, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was cool to to live over there. Um, I I'd say I'd do it again. Um, maybe when I'm older, maybe, maybe if we, you know, get successful when we grow up and, uh, can have two (laughs) houses, one here and one somewhere else. But, um, yeah, it was a really cool experience. Yeah, that's cool. Well, and it's really cool that you were able to kind of come back and just jump right back into a job that obviously kind of cared about you and that you cared about and that doesn't always happen I mean yeah it's like it's 
yeah, this industry is very fast moving. So obviously, you know, positions kind of come and go, but you just slid right back up in there. Yeah, it slid was, um, right on in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slid right in for sure. It was like um, a pizza. Like, like a just like a pie. like You're a pizza pie. Bit. It was a uh, yeah. It was it was cool. It was a it was a good experience for sure. I yeah. believe in the brand. I think that's also a really yeah, good oh, yeah. thing that um, brought me back was um, a that I was welcomed back um, and b that the concept, what we were providing, the services we were doing, the people we were feeding, yeah. and the jobs and the employees we had. I believed in it. Yeah. So it was easy to make that decision for sure. Yeah. Rad. So how long were you there? Ten at years Queen Anne. Something? I was um I was at Queen Anne from two thousand and uh thirteen until two thousand and I wanna say fourteen, fifteen. And um yeah. I actually went to culinary school at two thousand and fourteen till two thousand and fifteen. Um I decided I I one of the learning things, learning opportunities I had in uh in London was I general managed a staff of 42 with a full kitchen breakfast lunch and platters in the evening and I did not know how to turn on a fryer and (laughs) I did not know how to manage a chef or a kitchen or understand really how to do proper inventories in the beginning at the end I did but um, I never wanted to be in a position where I was in a position of authority and I didn't know what I was doing yeah um it was scary. It was hard. You know, the, the concept of fake it till you make it, that's yeah. cute for a little bit, Yeah. but when you're out of your depth, um, it can really bring on anxiety and it can really bring on all those different things that just don't make you, don't make you pleasant to probably be around. Uh, don't make you feel confident in yourself. Um, it's not good for anybody. No, totally. No, no. Yeah. So it was a, it was really where I learned that. And then I, I came back home and Kieran asked me, you know, if you could do anything, what would you want to do? And I was like, I've always wanted to go to culinary school. And he was like, well then do it. And I remember being like, that's stupid. Like I'm not ever going <laughs> to do it. It's just a dream. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, all of actually, dream? How dare you? Right? Like, like, you awful, mean? By the like, way. Yeah. You're supposed to have hopes and dreams. Like they don't come true. <laughs> right. Um, and he uh, he was he was doing his prerequisites because he's um, he's still in school. He's doing his nursing uh, degree right now, and then he's gonna hopefully get his nurse practitioner. That's his end game. So he was doing school, and he yeah. was like, "Well, why don't you just come and see? Like, come on in and just check it out." And I remember being like, "No, I don't want to go." And then he's like, "You're just gonna go and like see what those courses like. No one's signing you up for anything. You right. don't have to do anything." I ended up walking out, and I was like, "So I'm enrolled in school, and um, <laughs> I." start in like a week oh Um, my god I felt like I was totally bamboozled yeah Um, (laughs) did you have at that point did you have any intention of fully moving to back a house or were you just wanting the experience I I mean I just really didn't know like I'd always I've always enjoyed cooking I've always been in my kitchen that's really kind of where I get a lot of therapy from is being able to go and do um, just to use your hands, create, I think that my creation background of being, you know, my art degree, I really get to utilize that. Um, so I, I mean, everyone really asked me that and, and I, for like a split second of like, you know, if I could do anything, I would love to say that I would go, go be a chef, but to reinvent my career at this point in my life was just kind of a little bit, I didn't see overwhelming. <laughs> overwhelming and I just didn't really see how financially that would work itself out because I would have had to completely take like step back and take a complete start from scratch yeah yeah Yeah, completely start from scratch yeah Mm -hmm. and and I it wasn't that I didn't enjoy front of house I love front of house I really really love front of house but it was um it was something that I just I wanted to be able to have 100% autonomy with my ship and if there were any sinking holes, any issues that were problems, I could fill every single one of those positions right. on my own. Damn, and that's be completely badass. completely yeah. dependent. So, Super yeah. cool. That doesn't, I mean, you don't hear that very often at no. all that, you know, someone who has worked for a house for so long. I mean, we all love what we do because it's fast paced and fun and we have the best friends and we get to party after and we make lots of money and this and that so you know it's just kind of jumping over and maybe wanting to see what the other side is like that's really cool because obviously we need and love our back of house family just as much if not more yeah (laughs) yeah 
I felt like um, I felt like that was also something I really, really could see a difference between um, team effort when I was in London versus being in Seattle. I mean, Renee, you know, I mean, both of you two know how dependent and how inter, you know, combined the kitchen, you were in the kitchen at mm -hmm. all of our locations. You yeah. were physically having to walk through the kitchen and the spaces right. were so small and so oh, yeah. utilized. <laughs> and yeah. um, you had to be, you had to play nice with everybody to get the food out that you needed if you made a mistake to get, you, everyone had to play nice together. I didn't, I didn't see, I don't want to say it never happened, but I saw a lot of front of house, back of house divide in London. And okay. um, that was really hard for me, um, trying to be a, the head person in charge of everything and being like, you guys, we're all in the same team. We're all moving in the same direction. We yeah. all need to work together yeah. and we need to handle our business outside of the business and we need to be professionals here. And that was something that I I want if and when I ever have my own restaurant, that it needs to be one big family. You're, you're, totally. you're together and that's super duper important to me for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think a big part of that too, though, was the places that we worked, um, all of the locations there, there was nowhere to hide. Like there's no kitchen no. behind a wall. You're absolutely in the restaurant. You're like, you're kind of the part, the big show, you know, yeah, like dinner and a show. Yeah, totally. So, um, it is a giant brick oven. It's beautiful. It was all wood fire. And mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, it's, it's definitely part of the aesthetic of, of the restaurant. And the buzz of it and the atmosphere of it. But I mean, even at your location, you know, trying even just to get a bottle of wine, it, you have to reach over the guests. Mm -hmm. to grab it so oh, they yeah. are totally in or climb in over them <laughs> literally climb over them yes, try not yeah. to fall on them yeah. use the wine grabber that yeah. you hope still has a little bit you of guys had a wine grabber <laughs> we, we didn't have, have a wine, wine grabber, grabber. <laughs> i multiple occasions <laughs> yeah on multiple occasions i would have to as the manager because someone would be like i gotta get a fucking bottle of wine and there are people at that table because all of our wine racks were were of course by getting blocked by booths or tables or whatever so i would multiple occasions i would have to be like fuck like we ran out of our back stock that we could just grab i gotta get on the wall and i'd be like hey guys i'm really sorry guess who gets free tiramisu to <laughs> absolutely yeah we'd have to like comp desserts like can you just get up from your dinner i have to stand on your seat and grab this bottle of wine yeah. and not drop it Oh, yeah. Bear, I, uh, <laughs> luckily, I don't think that anybody ever um, got mad about that. I think it was like, we, and we would always just kill them with kindness and like buy them dessert yeah. and oh, stuff yeah. and People or do whatever we needed cool. to do. Yeah. yeah. But damn, that was that a tight space. <laughs> yeah. A tight space, yeah. For sure. That was a very tight space for sure. But yeah, uh, yeah there was, it, but like, yeah, it was all, everything you had to, there was no room to hide. Like you said, that's a perfect way to put it. And but the thing was, is exactly with what restaurant people love doing is you work hard together and you play hard together. And oh, yeah. the kitchen people were always so much fun to be around and teach you, you know, terrible words in Spanish and all, yeah. of, the, all <laughs> of the different stuff and, and want to bring in their food from home and share with you. And then everyone would bring their own food. It's just such a good community. Oh, yeah. I really, I loved, I loved that about that business that we worked for. Yeah. It's yeah. mole amazing oh yeah right. oh yes oh yes <laughs> um speaking of playing hard together the owner of that restaurant took um some people on a trip to italy to do some wine tasting and that sort of thing and i um heard that you guys had a room together and you had multiple yeah awesome yeah we trains, yeah. Automobiles. Yeah, trains, planes, and automobiles, and and beds. <laughs> and beds, exactly. Um, we yep, boats, lots of boats. Yep, totally. Um, <laughs> yeah, we uh we went to Italy because our uh the the owner of that company took some some of the managers. Uh, there wasn't very many of us. It was a pretty small group. Uh, mm -hmm. over to Italy to do uh. Well, a few different things. We started in Northern Italy to do a wine expo called Vin Italy in Verona. Um, and which is absolutely the most massive like event expo I have ever seen in my life. I wish like if you could take 
like your local convention center in any of your states and then put all 50 of them together. <laughs> that is basically what uh, yeah. Ben Italy is like. It's seriously fucking massive. It you would can't take even you, comprehend it. Yeah, we there's there is a zero percent possibility that we ever uh, came close to hitting all of the regions because oh, each no. region was like had multiple buildings. It was stupid. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, we went to um, whoo, buddy. My mom just got here and she hey, was ben. super super quiet. I have my headphones on and I seriously that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. I was wondering what you were doing. Your fa- I could see your face, and I you look scared. I know. Was- <laughs> we are recording right now. We'll have to take a screenshot of that moment and post it. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. <laughs> hey, mom. Hi, Pam. Um. <laughs> anyway, okay. So we uh we went to Italy. We did Vin Italy, and then we kind of t- we traveled south. We hit uh Rome. Mm-hmm. Uh, we started in Venice. We went to um Verona. And yep, then Rome. Uh, Rome, and then Gaeta, and, Gaeta. and mm-hmm. then Naples. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like, fuck, how long were we there for? A couple weeks. We were there for two, like over two weeks. I want to say we were there for 15 or 16 days. So it was, yeah. um, it was, it was intense, a long you know, trip. 24 hours a day, start off with Aperol Spritz in the morning and, and espresso, of, yeah. And espresso. And we tasted the most amazing food. Um, we got to see some stuff that we would have, I would have never, as oh, just like a regular person, been able to right. do. Yeah. I mean, you're sitting on the dock on Waterfront in Venice at Cipriani's, which is the nicest restaurant in one of the nicest restaurants in Venice. And we're sitting there and like, you got there on a boat like you we just kept trying to look at each other being like we're here right now this is crazy yeah. <laughs> we had a beautiful clock like a beautiful clock tower that was right across from our crazy room that had like the neat like Murano glass and this beautiful big bed like it was we had a really 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 fun time there's a zero percent possibility that I will ever be able to <laughs> like replicate anything close to the, that trip. <laughs> like that was absurd. Yes. We were staying in five star hotels. It was awesome. The um, whole time. Yeah. Not the whole time. Cause there was a scoach there where we were in Rome and we had an Airbnb where we had, we had a couple days off. We had um, to book that ourselves though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we had to, we had to do the trains ourselves. And I was like, I've never been to Italy. I've yeah, never been to like, Europe. I was like, oh, you. I was yeah. like, oh, we got it. We got the Euro train. We're going yeah, fast. We're getting there early. Out. We yeah, Erica. We... Erica was a champ. She was like, "I'm a world <laughs> traveler. I got this." Yeah, it's it like the fun so of it. Fun. I love that. Like, no, I love the feeling of being in a different country and not knowing what to do, and you just figure it out. Yeah, it was so much it's fun. We had language. so much yeah. fun. Yeah. We had so much fun. We ran um, into the uh, the actor. Remember, we ran yeah. into that, a, a Scottish actor in uh, in, uh, in in Rome. At an... The guy from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Wait, uh, Lord Mormont from Game yeah. of Thrones. We were in Rome and we were like, uh, we had no Black idea call. what to do. We just like were walking around trying to find anything, any kind of nightlife to do in Rome. And we didn't really know what, whatever. So we stumbled upon an Irish bar in Rome and met the Scottish actor from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Yeah, um, I can't right, remember his about, name, right. but yeah, it was, it was, but nobody believed me. He walked out and I was like, oh my God, is that, I didn't know his name, uh, James, know. Or, uh, James Cuomo, James Corso or Como. And uh, Kira was like, it's not him. And then he was, and then we all looked at each other like, it's him. Yeah. And Kira ended up hanging out Mormont with him. Mormont is the fictional character and it is played by James Corso or James Cor- Cosmo. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's a Doesn't fun sound name. very Scottish to me. No. Well, yeah. and he was, but he was in the, every, everyone was like. Braveheart. I think Kieran was the one that was like, he's from Braveheart. He's the dad oh, yeah. in Braveheart. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Kieran, and Kieran was like. Oh, <gasps> <with him. laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so then, and then, so Kieran, um, who had met us in Rome on this trip, um, he went and just like had beers and whiskeys or some shit with this dude forever. So me and Erica just sat at a table. We're like, well, do you want to do a Jameson shot? Yeah, <laughs> we, we were like, had, we had so much wine at that point that we were ready to just not drink wine. And we were yeah. Cutting, oh, yeah. into, cutting into some Magners and some, uh, and some Jameson for sure. Yeah. That was, yeah. that was, a, we stayed in Trastevere, um, right kind of by the stair area. And that was beautiful. We could walk right to our place. 
Oh, um, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. But I got anything, like... so drunk that night that I, <laughs> we all got really, really drunk that night, but I, uh, I wandered off into an alley to pee, uh, <laughs> because, hey, you gotta go, you gotta go, you know what I mean? Yeah. Jeez. And there's sure. like <laughs> five Ubers in all of Rome at this time. And I guess I like, I seriously, I, we got real drunk. So I don't really remember this night at the end of the night, like this part. I don't think well. any of us did. Yeah. yeah. Well, Kieran does. So of I course. went and peed <laughs> and then, um, I guess like Kieran was worried about me going into a random alley in Rome to what? pee, which is like, you know, pretty fair. <laughs> So yeah, he was like trying to like, yeah, yeah no. He's trying and to so, block you. For... Yeah, he was like trying to like be in between us or whatever and make sure I wasn't gonna get kidnapped. And then anyway, we end up in an Uber. I, I of course am the guy that just hops in the front seat of the Uber. And I guess I was like <laughs> fucking around with his radio. Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> and so we get, we do make it back to our place, and then. The next yeah. day, Kieran tells Erica and I that we were super drunk and shitty and, and we're like fighting about literally nothing. <laughs> we don't even remember. <laughs> Neither of us remember anything about like fighting. And I was like, oh, I love you. It's fine. Yeah. He <laughs> yeah, was like, go apologize. Go apologize. Yeah. Sir. You guys were, you guys were bickering and not being nice to each other. And I was like, yeah. I'm really sorry, Renee, but I was really mean. And Renee's like, I don't remember any of it. <laughs> it's fine. Sign. Yeah, all good. All God. good. We've all yeah. been there. It's okay. We had that, so many crazy. Uh, yeah, that was such a that whole trip was bonkers, dude. We stayed in like a castle. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we did. It was we uh, saw we saw mummies. We went to a mummy exhibition or something that, that we um, in Rome. Uh, it wasn't mummies. It was skulls. It was like a uh, monks. Uh, had put together these like, fuck. I wish I remembered what it was called, but it was like in the basement of a church, and these monks had collected all it. these bones, yeah, and like put them together in these really elaborate designs and stuff. And it was like, don't take pictures. You're not allowed to take pictures. And I was like, I'm <laughs> just making a phone call. And yeah. so I, <laughs> I oh, took, like, I'm sure they've never seen that. Before. Yeah, totally. I was yeah, like, right. I'm super slick. You're but not, <laughs> not at all yeah and i yeah. think that i don't think that any of the pictures that i took came out super well but they're on they're online uh i'll find some to post yeah. but it was really cool i like i love creepy weird stuff so i was like absolutely in heaven that was yeah, cool that was really fun yeah yeah and we did uh we toured uh pompeii which was the coolest thing in the world oh, yeah that um sounds rad. i would like to do that yeah I had that absolutely really no cool. idea how big it was. The guy, we were able to do a private, our own private tour guide of both Rome and of Pompeii. And he was saying that like, it would take at least three days to walk what they have so far un, like dug up of Pompeii, which is the Ooh. craziest thing in the world to me. Like yeah. I had no idea it was that big. And there's just, I mean, cause because Italy is so old like yeah you're, you're walking around Rome and there's like a McDonald's and then literally connected to the McDonald's is this excavated ancient site ruin where there's like ancient ruin that's coming up through the ground and it's like they had to kind of in certain areas they just stopped digging because they know it's there's stuff down there but they just you can't you can't just continue to dig up stuff I guess and yeah um, yeah, that was crazy. And I also remember the, the guy that was giving us the guide in, um, in Rome said that, uh, at when they do street construction or have to build like tracks for whatever, they're like, at some point you have to just ignore the shit that you dig up because oh, you weird. have, the city has to run. Like you still, you have to have roads, you have to have infrastructure. So yeah. you can't yeah. just like call every single thing in the city um an ancient ruin and like you know whatever historic so that site. was really interesting yeah historic site yeah. um so anyway That's italy cool. was awesome if you have uh, the chance to go i highly suggest it Oof, very absolutely. cool mm. yeah anyway well, yeah um we heard that you got promoted today at the place that you work these days yeah and tell us about what you're about doing it. now yeah let's hear about um, it 
So I work with, uh, I work for a restaurant group called Moctezuma's Mexican restaurants. And um, yeah, I, I've been with the company now going on about a year and seven, eight months now, and um, was told today that um, my new role was going to be expanding and I wasn't going to be just events and catering that I was actually going to be um, director of marketing. So um, awesome. Woo -woo! Exciting. That's uh, very scary. exciting. <laughs> it's very, very exciting. Um, it's really, and that's where I need some of your pointers with all your photography experience. Renee. There you go. Um, <laughs> I'll try all of that. Yeah, Just absolutely. I've got a room. camera that I want you to, yeah, exactly. I'll take you to the dark room. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've got a camera that I need to pull out and start using like a Canon, but um, yeah, no, I'm really, really excited um, doing social media, kind of having all different, like touching all different aspects of the business. I'm still going to be doing catering and events, which is awesome. We have a new food truck that we've um, launched that we've just gone just over a month. I want to say today. Oh, wow. Was um, that just, was that a thing that was going to happen or was that a pivot due to COVID? Pivot due to COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Good yeah. job. That's great. It was something we'd always kind of talked about, um, but then it wasn't anything that had had a ton of um, traction quite yet. Uh, I had kind of created, uh, we were working with Starfire, which is a soccer kind of complex down right by South Center, which mm -hmm. was awesome. And I had built a relationship with them for the Seawolf game, which is the um, rugby uh, that is here in Seattle, yeah, and, um, the national rugby team, one of the uh, teams. And um not national, that's the USA Eagles, um, but they're the local rugby team. Sure, yeah. Here. And uh, we were vending at their games uh, and we were just setting up pop-up tents and just kind of making a makeshift kitchen and, and doing that. And that was kind of where we were like, okay, we're nestled between food trucks and we're doing sales that are beating the other food trucks. Like mm. we should have those facilities because we could also be pushing more sales probably. So um, and going once, other places. Totally. <laughs> totally. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, once we um, we're, we're fortunate that we were able to do that, that um, my owner said, this is important and this is something we want to try and do um, be able to build those um, new streams of revenue, which is really, really important uh, with, you know, when everything is so limited on, on, on different things that you are yeah. able to do, right. being able to take it to the streets and go mobile is we're hoping going to be a, a great new offering that we're going to be able to do with our brand. For sure. Well, how's the first month been? It's been great. We've been, um, we popped up over at Mercer Island. Um, we are uh, kind of right by where the new light rail is going to be. Like literally, oh, cool. like you could throw a stone to where the new light rail is going to be. Um, yeah. And Mercer yeah. Island is just right outside of Seattle. I mean, yeah, it's like a Seattle proper. It's right in between Bellevue and Seattle. So the two biggest cities in, you know, this area. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And the cool thing about that location was that we are selling through DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. So all third-party platforms. And oh, interesting. Yeah then they deliver for us to a 10 mile radius. So we're hitting parts of Bellevue. We're hitting parts of Seattle. We're hitting um, Mercer Island completely. Um, so it was a, it was a really, really great, it's been a really great opportunity for like our kickoff um, for location. Yeah. We don't have, and it's East side, you know, it's East side of Seattle. So people that are over there don't necessarily. Money, money, money. Yeah. 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 Mercer Island has um, like, there's so many people on that island um, right. and it's like 40 I want to say that they said that it was like 40,000 people live oh. just on Mercer Island are you serious yeah. they have probably like a handful of restaurants and I think they only wow. have like a very small pinch of Mexican right. restaurants so um nice. so yeah we're really hoping that it that's so great that it takes off yeah yeah that's awesome so how many locations of Moctezuma's are there so we have um four brick and mortars okay uh, yeah and then well what about so okay food truck takes off is that going to be a thing are you guys going to just have a bunch of more food trucks or what's the deal well that's still something that we're we're kind of navigating um i think that the next would probably be entertaining the idea of a brick and mortar on the east side um looking over there because there we don't have anything on the east side we're very established in the south puget sound um, going it. all the way around to Silverdale. So um, we've got Silverdale, we've got um, Gig Harbor, we've got Tacoma, which is our, which is our, our first. And then we have okay. South Center. So we're all around the Puget Sound. Okay. Um, so, so you guys are moving up. Yeah. East side. Moving sounds, north. Moving sounds north. like it would Northeast. be a good Northeast or, <laughs> I mean, even into Seattle potentially at some point, but um, yeah, it sounds like that's going to be a good, good 
course of action for sure. Cool. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's exciting. It sounds like they love you. So hell yeah. Girl. Yeah. It's a fun company. That's for <laughs> sure. They keep me on my toes. They've got me learning so much, so much stuff that I would have, you know, never necessarily, you know, how, when, when do you get a put together a food truck? Like when do you, when yeah, someone, seriously. Say, hey, go get a food truck, go, go figure it out, go do all of the, you know, permitting and figure all that stuff out. And at first, when you look at it, you're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? And then you just pick it apart piece by piece, make your list. And um, before you know it, you got a food truck up and running in Mercer Island. Nice. That's awesome. Good for you. So, well, and I can imagine that that was a big transition going from like pizza and tons of wine and doing all of this to Mexican food and tequila. And I'm sure there was lots and lots to learn. (laughs) Oh, yes. Oh, yes. (laughs) And, but uh, you started only... out, you did some other stuff, though, when you first got this job with the stuff? spirits. Oh, OK. Oh, yes. The spirits. Well, so the wine, the wine education was really it really did set me up for a, a pretty solid infrastructure of learning and understanding the basics of why things are what they are, why they grow where they grow, why they taste the way they taste. Um, right. But uh, I never I never was a tequila drinker. I only drank tequila when I was with Renee. And, um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, when I, when I got brought on, I was told, you know, that I was going to be helping out with the catering and event side. And then, um, we, um, the company that I work for also owns, um, a, well, they're their own private entities, but we're associated with Grandessa, uh, Orange Liqueur, which, um, is a, it's a neutral based spirit so it's like a grain-based spirit but it's sweetened with agave nectar so um hmm. it's less invasive on the on your this, this system and it's yeah. got a lower glycemic index because it's not going to be you know corn syrup right which, um all of yeah does that mean that it's going to be less of a hangover i like to think so but there's no <laughs> studies proving that um science I mean, like, like prove it. I think we should yeah. probably do our own our own research on this. Yeah, there you I'm go. In. Um, <laughs> I will definitely uh, I will definitely bring you girls some samples of it for sure. Love um, it. Yeah, no, it's um, it's a ton of fun. It's when people ask what it's like, um, it, it's kind of like uh, I don't want to say Grand Gala, but they're probably our closest competitor or Grand Marnier. Yeah. Um, the difference is, and this comes into our wine based knowledge, right? Renee is terroir. Yeah. Um, this is going to have, um, it's going to have tequila in it. So it's going to be a uh, neutral grain, like the spirit's going to be that, but then it's going to have agave, which is coming from, from the agave plant, which tequila comes from. So when you think about like what grows together, goes together, sure. why yeah. wouldn't you yeah. want something that's going to enhance the flavors that has the same components versus a cognac or a brandy that's going to either be a wine base or like a, a sugar cane base or a rum base, um, so that it's the same thing. It's not covering it. It's enhancing the spirit. Love right. it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Sounds delightful. Yeah. It's delicious. Over ice is delicious. It's yeah. We also have this really cool, which I haven't even talked to you about, but we have this really cool um, 50 milliliter um, little sidecar, which is a patent that we own. That was also the really cool piece of it going into it when I was learning about the position of just this as a little catalyst, like yeah. this bottle mm-hmm. on its own. You have to describe the bottle for our listeners. So the bottle was inspired, um, our, my owner, he, um, was inspired by bottles that you could sit on the rim of the glass, something that you could sit on the rim of the glass. And it was like a self-filling drink you would put in, um, kind of like a Corona Rita or any of like a Irish, you know, trash can or any of those things sure. that you stick upside down. Right. Um, and so then he had looked into the research and um, saw that there was no patents on anything that was like that. And then he ended up getting the patent on this little bottle. That's and crazy. so nobody else can have a actual clip, which this is the little clip here um, yeah. on the side of the rim of the bottle. Um, so we have the right to that with this product on top of the bottle being cool. The product tastes really good. So that was a, that's really easy selling point. And that was really got me hook, line and sinker where I was like, wow, this little guy here is so, so cool. Nobody yeah. else can do this. Um, so it's been, yeah. It's, it's, so it's what crazy. would you, what, what's the best way to execute this little bad boy? 
So when you, like for us, we have a grandessa margarita, which is going to be like a classic margarita. It's in a grande glass. It's like 18 ounces. You just pop it and you, you put over the top a little bit and then you clip it to the side. And then as you drink your drink, you're getting a full top shelf margarita all the way through the drink. Beautiful. And then with gravity, how gravity works, which we didn't even intend, but it works out. <laughs> um, it sucks that the drink back thing. up and it self like distributes. Ah, that, like circulates cool. itself. Yeah. It bubbles right back up. So you can see at one point when it, you can just see that it's kind of clear. And then at some point when you're drinking through the drink, it'll change into your drink and then self distribute back through. So then you have an extra little guy at the end that goes into your glass. So that's it's, fun. Uh, yeah, it's a ton yeah. of fun and it's delicious. So that sounds awesome. Well, I yeah. want a margarita now. So it's yeah, exciting. I do too. <laughs> I should have made one before, before I wish I would have dropped them off at your guys' houses. No kidding. That sounds <laughs> awesome. I want that. We'll do it. You'll have to come to the restaurant when we're fully open. Yeah, deal. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very into that. And also tacos. So <laughs> yeah, we can't love argue tacos. with tacos. We tacos are like the best. Tacos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. It sounds like you've landed at a really cool place that you're being valued and that you also value. And that's, I mean, what more could you ask for in this really kind of crazy, fast moving, amazing industry, you know? Yeah, no, it's been, um, it's just been an awesome company to, to pivot into. I mean, I know that, um, the business that we work for, um, my restaurant in Georgetown is no longer open. So yeah. when you think yeah. about what could have potentially happened had I chose not to jump at the opportunity that was presented to me, um, you know, who knows? Maybe it would still be open. I don't know. But um, I yeah. know that it's been a great, it's been a great transition for me. I've been welcomed with open arms and I've just been learning a ton and still learning a ton and being challenged. So it's been, um, it's been really great to work with the team that I'm working with for sure. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's amazing. And then Jinx. I, I had a question and I forgot what it was. Uh, is it because we jinxed? Uh, maybe yeah. it was. It like, seriously, I was like, and that bunk, it like went out like that. <laughs> Sorry. Was, oh, you fucked me up. Okay. Well, we like to prepare a game for our guests. And we don't do this for every guest, only, you know, when the most special guest of a good Aww, game. Yeah. So this is just a really quick one. We like to do it when we're wrapping things up and it's been lovely talking to you, but feel free to take a shot <laughs> before this. I'll do one with you, Erica. Oh my gosh. I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab a. Okay. okay. I'll have a baby one just because you guys are peer pressuring me. <laughs> God, Anna. God, stupid. Oh, Jesus. All right. Cheers. That is a Cheers. baby one. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an ouncer. Yeah. How many? How many? Ooh. Oh, smooth. Okay. Well, this is actually a super, super easy game. Um, And we will kind of, well, let's tag team it, Renee. What do you say? So, Erica, let's just do a baby round of would you rather. Okay. Okay. I'll start here. We'll start easy and then we'll just maybe get a little weird. Get really hard. <laughs> so, Erica, for one year, if you could only choose one thing to eat, would it be pizza or tacos? Tacos. tacos. Me too. Yeah. Not, no one's asking me, but I agree. <laughs> I, mean, I, I definitely want to know what you would choose to be tacos, huh? I think that I would probably go tacos, but uh... I love pizza too. I mean, it depends on what kind of pizza, right? I yeah. think that you can do, I feel like you should, because I, both of them are so versatile that I think you can be able to do whatever you want on, on both of those options. That's, I'm yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I yeah. still choose tacos. <laughs> I still choose tacos. Yeah. Let's yeah. carbohydrate. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm but going tacos. The... Okay. Three well, for tacos. All right. Okay. Three cool. tacos. Um, okay. So the only alcoholic beverage that you can have for the rest of time, and it can be whatever one you want in these categories, but it's either tequila or wine. Uh, I'm going to go wine. I knew it. I'd I'm going to go wine. You traitor. Yeah. I, well, I, 
I, I, tequila is, I'm still learning a ton about tequila, but I, wine is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Yeah. I choose wine for sure. I choose tequila 1000%. Okay. Two against <laughs> one here. Two against one, Erica. We win. Okay. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, would you rather live in a studio apartment with, um, for one note, year for one year side note, we love to make fun of food network stars on this, uh, podcast program here would you rather live in a studio apartment for a year with paula dean or the barefoot contessa barefoot contessa 100 <laughs> percent. i love her i love her too and then renee was saying the other day that she thinks she's a she's bitch mean. she's i think she's just a really wealthy lady i mean yeah. when you are so wealthy that you just have a cooking show and yeah. your kitchen and everything's like just crazy yeah yeah Paula Dean, I, she, she's kind of racist here. I was going to say that. Yeah. A little, Fuck, um, that's right. I forgot little, about no, that. Yeah. She, she, she's from the South. Yeah. Damn no, it. I was going to say Paula Dean because like butter. Yeah. yeah. She's definitely an amazing cook, um, chef, but, uh, I would definitely. Also, I feel like she would just always call me darling. And I, I would. like It would that. make you feel nice. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of racist, but calls you darling and will make you the best darn fried chicken of your life. I'm just like going to throw out there that I kind of feel like Barefoot Contessa could also be racist. So I'm, you know. Yeah, she's probably kind of. She kind of gives me a little bit of a racist vibe. Also, there was a story where there was like a -a Make-A-Wish kid that like (laughs) wanted to meet Barefoot Contessa and she was like, nah, fuck off. So oh, she's I not nice. No way. <laughs> yeah. This is not confirmed, folks. This well, not- I have a terrible memory, but I remember that. something about a make a wish. Here's yeah, the thing. But- if we're choosing between kind like wealthy, kind of racist white ladies, I want for the barefoot contessa to make me like lobster and risotto and like Same. you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going yeah. Paul Dean. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, two against one again. <laughs> two against one. Okay. All right, Renee, you go. Um, okay. You have to be on a, like a contestant of one of those, you know, competition foodie shows. Okay. You have to be a contestant on either Chopped or Great British Bake Off. Ooh, Great British Bake Off. Oh, I, I did. I actually thought you were going to say Chopped. I thought you were going to say Chopped. I choose Chopped for sure. I always have wanted to go on Chopped. I do you love to bake or is that, do you think you had to have a better chance of winning? I think I just like the show better. Okay. I feel like it's just really, they're really all together. I yeah. like that they support each other. Um, okay. Whereas Chopped, I think is a little bit, I mean, it's cutthroat. It, I think it's great. I love both. I guess if, if Great British Bake Off could be um, cooking, like where you're doing like regular food, not just baked items, I would yeah. suck it. I, I'm not a baker. I'm not a baker at all. <laughs> I am a, I am off the hip, figure it out the way Me I like too. it. it yeah. I don't follow recipes. Baking um, is absolutely same. has to be a science. It's it a is, total yeah. science. Everything's weighed. If you don't do it that way, it turns out terrible. And then totally. you're like, I just wasted this whole amount of time and all this right. butter and sugar. And, <laughs> but uh, I, I would like to say that I could do bake, for, bake uh, great British bake off, but yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That's my Love answer. It. I, because no one asked me my goddamn answer. (laughs) (laughs) Renee, Renee, what would you do? do? This is about me. (laughs) Well, I, uh, Chop intimidates me too much, so I'm doing the British Bake Off, even though I've only watched like half of an episode of that, but it feels nicer, so I'm going to go that way. Okay. Well, two against one, but I choose Chopped. Nice. Okay. All right. I definitely choose Chopped. Fine. Okay. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> this is my final question, but would you rather have spatula hands or spoon fingers? <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> she um, thought of it on her own, I, and I love it. I'm, I'm really excited about, about this it. one. <laughs> I think I would like spatula hands. I love oh. using a spatula for everything. For everything. I use like, a spatula for everything. What, what, is a, what is a scenario where you're using a spatula where a normal person would not use a spatula? I even use it when I'm talking salads. Oh, like I, okay. 
I use it for everything. Is this like, a I, sexual thing or like an actual <laughs> salad? When I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I was just thinking about like the Caesar salad. She's I'm just have in the bedroom smacking <laughs> Kieran's ass with a spatula. <laughs> She's like special hands. Special <laughs> hands for sure. Yeah, absolutely. He, he might not want that. He probably want the spoon fed hands. So, um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> spatula hands. Spatula hands it is. Renee, what do you choose? Spatula hands or spoon fingers? Uh, I feel like, I feel like with, at least with spatula hands, you would be able to like, I think you'd be able to like maneuver life a tiny bit easier than spoon fingers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You'd be able to like, you might not be able to open a door, but like, I think Shit, that... you're right. <laughs> I was going to say spoon fingers. Are you? Yeah. Oh, the great I mean, upset of can, 2021. Yeah. <laughs> this is always two against one on this yeah, show, isn't it? It is. I know. <laughs> it's, this is a hostile environment. We're sorry to bring you into it. Oh, no. I'm loving it. I'm Anna, adoring yeah, it. right. Anna does love a soup. I do love soup. I do, too. I love all soup. What's your but favorite you... soup? Uh, my favorite soup is probably something like curry-y and veggie-y. Yeah. That's my answer. I like I how know. she was, she was like, well, I'm really glad you asked. So <laughs> I have this recipe if you want me to go and chop. <laughs> she I goes on chopped and it's soup for every course. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, cool. Uh, why is this bitch making us weird desserts? Why is it always lentils with you? <laughs> yeah, I love lentils. I do too. I, love, I, I, do too. I, love I lentils. eat lentils almost every day. <laughs> Okay, Renee, uh, pick. okay, okay. So you have to. <laughs> this is the last question. No, and... you never picked spatula hands oh, and spoon fingers. No, I said spatula. Oh, you did. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I think it's the spoon fingers is too. I thought too... you were flip flopping. Like I thought you were like going back and forth. No, I think it would be hard to open a door with spoon fingers too. So <laughs> I don't know how how to open a door. Anyway, right. last okay, question. last question. You have to bone, either. Mario Batali or Bobby Flay? <laughs> okay, the listeners can't see that Erica just made barf mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I just made boy yo yoing mouth. So whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to, I mean, I would have to go with uh, Bobby Flay for sure. He, I don't uh, actually remember what either of these people look like. Okay, look him up uh, really both quick. Both redheads. Everybody. They are okay. both. Hell. So they, they, already have to, they, they already have to work just a little bit harder, you know. Yeah, I, you know they both are going to be chefs. They're both going to feed you when it's done, which will yeah. be amazing. Well, um, yeah. Huh. I think Mario Batali already has had some scandals in the news. I think that he kind of. Um, I know that he's an amazing chef, but um, not yeah, not an attractive human being. No, he's not. But would the sandwich mm -hmm. he makes you after boning which one is be which? better than? Oh, Mario Batali is on the left, and Bobby Flay. Is... Bobby Flay kind of looks hot in that picture. Yeah, he looks I was like, just a, like a bad say. boy. Yeah, he looks kind of like. Uh, yeah, he looks. He looks handsome. Wait, is picture, wait because yeah. my camera's all backwards because science. Okay, Bobby. Uh, Bobby Flay, the, Flay, the red shirt. Hot. Yeah. Yeah, Bobby Flay's red shirt. <laughs> Mario Batali is balding with a long braid and okay here's um, the <laughs> yeah oh he has a long braid oh okay he has like a long red a long braid not, it's that not I was necessarily a braid that. but it, it's it's definitely a ponytail it's like a gross skullet. yeah okay. could, Bobby you could Bobby tug Flay. on it with your yeah. spatula Bobby Flay. <laughs> <laughs> you can tug on it with your spoon fingers <laughs> okay Bobby Flay across the board that's across the board Bobby Flay Bobby because Flay. Here's the thing. It looks like Mario Batali is going to take a while. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> this is going to be a thing that yeah. I'm going to need to just hurry the fuck up. Let's but go. But he will braise you a fucking lamb shank after. If oh, yes, he will. Too. He will yeah. cut you. I'll make meat. my own goddamn taco. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is all Italian. Well, they both kind of are all Italian. But um, yeah, no, no, not, not okay. Mario. Well, Bobby Flay, guess what? <laughs> We'd good job you. good job the winner. bobby <laughs> bobby, bobby. Uh, well that was fun yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, it was a good game. Yeah. well thank you for um taking the time out and hanging out with us erica this has been really great and also 
remember when you said that we could come and get margaritas we're gonna write uh, that yeah. down and remember it <laughs> yeah that's yeah, true please yeah. do and if you want to come and visit us in mercer island come check us out on the truck but um yeah Love i'm it. i'm normally out of our south center location so give me a jingle and come which is come so to close home. to me i need to come visit you do you yeah. really do need to come and visit i'm i'm there most days um but i i do make my rounds to all locations but um I'd love to have you both down for sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. That. We're definitely going to do that. For sure. That's the thing. Awesome. Thank, you for, thank you for everything. And thank you for making me feel so welcome and at ease. I never, oh. I definitely was a little bit nervous, but uh, this is a ton of fun. It's just like, yeah, girls. totally. Yeah. Exactly. Girls. yeah. It's, it's like such a weird thing, even just kind of hear your own voice and doing this thing that you know is going to be recorded but then you're like oh actually I'm just kind of chatting and it's fun so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you, you had a good time totally good. yeah well I appreciate it uh, and I'm, I'm glad we didn't have any nudity scenes on the show I am um, as we got we close it, but whatever <laughs> next there's always next time yeah <laughs> next time, I next know. time. <laughs> poor Kieran waking up from his slumber he was, like, slumber. he was just in Sorry there. To... Yeah. He's like, listen, I did not sign up for this. I had to go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> He's uh, like, Erica, do you have the spatula? Yeah. <laughs> like, get on in here, spatula hands. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh that's good. fun. Uh, well, so Renee, where could our lovely listeners uh see our web page <laughs> oh my god jesus christ oh that was that was an attempt uh if you can <laughs> go ahead and subscribe uh and and review our podcast shots in the walk-in you can go to our website shots in the dot com or uh listen to us on spotify or apple podcasts wherever you listen to podcasts really uh, mm-hmm. Just make sure that you follow us on Instagram because that's really what we're using. We're trying real hard to do other social media, but we're old and dumb. So very, very old. And no. Dumb. So if there's anyone who knows how to do Facebook that could be our intern, we yeah. will take <gasps> you for a margarita. <laughs> yeah, love it. <laughs> and if anyone has any funny um, stories, anecdotes, thoughts just wants to you know get something off their chest yeah if or if you want to be a guest com. oh yeah well i was gonna say leave us a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash s-i-t-w yes. um, but yeah if you want to be a guest please reach out to us contact at shots in the send us a oh wait slide into our dms Ooh, yeah that's what the kids are saying <laughs> not I like your, it not with your dick but with your yeah dick no, don't send us a pic. No, we don't need any pics. Don't send us your pic. Just send us, just let us know. Just, um, just words. Thanks. Yeah, That'd be great. Let's do that. We have lots <laughs> of rad guests coming up. And I, once again, thank you, Erica. This has been super fun. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Erica. Ladies. Good yeah, to talk to you. We All will, right. We will be here next Tuesday for you people again with another amazing person who works in the restaurant ish industries. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.